Why do I never get this thing fixed? <laughs> Alright, need to do something with that fan. Hello folks. Yeah, um, this is my ZD915 desoldering station that I've had for a couple of years now. And for the last few months, the exhaust fan's been making that horrible noise and not spinning correctly. So I think it's about time I had a look at it. But I thought, well, you know what, while I'm, while I'm inside it, it might be interesting for other people to have a look as well. And I can give you my thoughts on this tool. So, so yeah, it wasn't expensive. Uh, well, not compared to other desoldering stations anyway. I think I paid about £70 for it. And I think that included the postage. I'm not sure. Anyway, yes, it is a, um, well, it's a heated desoldering pump, really. It's a very, very simple thing. Let me, let me take you through it. So it's very simple in operation, really. It's a, there's a heated tube here with a, with a hole in the end. And you, you quite simply put that over the component you want to desolder. Wait for the solder to melt. Pull the trigger, which pulls a vacuum. And it sucks the solder right out of the joint uh, into this little container, allowing you to remove the components. It's um, there's, there's plenty of them on the market. This seems to be the cheapest. So what you've got is you've got a little filter in there, which needs to be changed very regularly. And the, the glass tube, which needs to be emptied very regularly as well. And when it works, it works really, really well. But... It is very prone to clogging up. So it does come with a selection of these little, little cleaners that you can you can push in. So you'd be happy soldering away or desoldering away and then you'll suddenly have a, a reduction in suction and it doesn't seem to be working. It's usually just because it's plugged up and this will usually clean it out. And that's something you have to do very regularly. On the main unit, there is another filter in there just to catch anything that maybe this first filter missed. I've never really had to change this. It never seems to get dirty. I think as long as you keep on top of keeping this clean and keeping the filter changed, you should be fine. On the front, you've got the power switch, the temperature up and down, and you can switch the display between Celsius and Fahrenheit. All fairly basic stuff. On the side, it's got the the little holster for the gun, and you can either leave that mounted to the side, or it is on rubber feet, so you can actually have it separately as well if you prefer. Personally, I prefer it just to keep it hooked into the side, and I know it's secure and it's not going to tip over that way. The consumables for it are really cheap, so the filters, packer filters, will cost you two or three pounds, unless maybe you want to make your own. I suppose that's always an option. The glass tube and the seals, they are all available from numerous suppliers online and really easy to fit. So they're consumables as well. The tips, again, four or five pounds for a pack of new tips. And is this thing cool? Yeah. And they're easy enough to change. So it's like, well, it's like any soldering iron, really. This has been on, I just don't want to burn my fingers. Yeah, I mean, it's very easy to swap the tips. And it does come with a pack with um, varying hole sizes as well. Put that back together. But it is definitely aimed at the hobbyist um, casual user. I would say looking at the build quality of it, I really, really don't think it's up to scratch if you're going to use something like this in any sort of professional capacity. The reason I say that is because it does tend to clog up a lot and you are constantly changing the filters and it does have a bit of a, a bit of a cheap feel to it. And this thing's I've had a lot of use out of it, but it's not that old and it's not getting daily use. And yet I've had to replace the seals in the gun once already. That fan's making a noise. Things like that. Yeah, I think if you were using this as a professional, yeah, I think it would become irritating. I wouldn't recommend it for that. 
terms of parts availability I bought an entire spare gun for it and I think including postage that was what 20 pounds something like that it's just a handy thing to have should the heating element fail in this so they're not expensive to buy and they're not expensive to maintain either but they're certainly not professional quality anyway I need to have a look at this fan don't I so let's get into it actually just before I do get into it I wanted to know if the tip of that gun is earthed let me just check it out yes it is that is good that is good okay let's continue okay we're in so what have we got we've got the power switch down there got the control board for the switches on the front and the display that will be the vacuum pump motor presumably that's the pump and oh that is mounted on little rubber mounts just to keep the vibration down and then the tube goes through to the front so what have we got? The uh, oh yeah, the the offending fan. I've bought what I think is the correct replacement, so I'll just swap that out. And what is this? Some sort of regulator? I don't know. Maybe control box. Yeah, it's probably ah yeah, it'll be the control box. Yeah, so that switches the pump in and out because that's where it's connected to. And I assume that is the power supply in there. Yeah, looks a bit buckled and bent. Yeah, there's an awful lot of burn metal in here. Um, has that been earthed? I will check. Right, so let's check for an earth. The pump does not. But that's fine. I don't think that's a mains voltage coming through it anyway. It's coming out of the power supply, so that's probably okay. Power supply case, Ooh, you can't see, yes that's earthed, and the main case, let's see if we can get a, yeah that's earthed, so it's a metal case and it is earthed, uh, it's really safe, I do like that. Right, let's see if we can get that fan out, uh, should be simple enough, hope I've bought the right replacement, we'll soon find out. I think we're good. I think I've uh, I think I've got that just nice. So 12 volts and it's the same size. Okay. Yeah, I've taken the fan back out and then turned it round so now it faces the correct way and it blows air out of the case as it's supposed to because that's the kind of idiot I am. It should work a bit better so let's give it a go. That's better. It's not making that horrible noise anymore now. Excellent! So just before I put it back together, it's worth noting that the two screws here that go into the top of the case are slightly longer than the rest. So if you've got one of these and you take it apart, just make sure you put those back in the correct place. If you don't, I mean, the only place it would cause a problem, I think, is here with this one where you could be going into the side of the power supply. So you might do some damage with the longer screw there. So just, just be aware of it. Let's take a look inside the gun itself. And just see how that's constructed so 
just to release this chamber you just click this button this comes back and then you should be able to well it can be a bit stiff there we go you can pop out the uh, the chamber and that's how you would change the filter I am dropping solder everywhere I will clean that up in a minute there is a little rubber seal there just for sealing one end of the chamber if you find you've got no suction after cleaning the gun out make sure that's still where it should be because it will fall out of its own accord inside the gun itself Right, there is a spring right there, which is itching to leap out, so just be careful. There we go. Okay, very, very simple thing. So, vacuum hose comes up in here into the base of this, which provides the vacuum to the tube. There's a little micro switch that's operated by the trigger. And that's pretty much it. Um, there is some strain relief on the electrical cable, but there's nothing really on the vacuum tube. There's a there's a cable tie that's been kind of wrapped around it, and that's it. But it's built to a cost, of course it is. And for what you pay, I don't think it's too bad. Let's put this back together. Right, we're all back together and running again. So this is a spectrum board I've lifted out of my stash. I use it for spurs. So I'll show you how well or not it actually desolders. I want to be careful with this actually because there's some really good components on this that I don't want to damage, but yeah, let's take a couple of these sockets out. So just let the joint desolder, give it a wiggle. And done. Yeah, simple as that. And there is absolutely zero damage to the board whatsoever there. Brilliant. Yeah, so there you go. That's the... Uh, that's a look at that. I think if you're a hobbyist and you're looking for a cheap desoldering tool, I would recommend it. They're not perfect, of course they're not, and they're built to a cost, but for what you get for the money, they, they really are good. If you're a professional, yeah, it's probably not the right unit for you, in my humble opinion, but I don't know, I don't know. Let me know if you've got one of these and what your experiences are with them. I'd be, I'd be interested to know. Like I said, I've had this a couple of years. And the only actual fault it's developed was that was that noisy fan. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.